What's up everybody, it's your boy Meme here. Uh, you may notice 60 FPS is good, it's because for the past um, couple months, um, my camera's been a little weird and it's not been exactly at 60 frames a second, but it's been recording at 60 frames a second. So it's kind of been getting a 60 FPS recording, like sort of output of a 30 FPS uh, input, which is the camera. Uh, so that's a little weird, but things should be good now. Uh, you know, nothing really happened today. For breakfast, I had some eggs on toast and that was good. Um, for lunch, I'm probably going to be having uh, the mess sandwich at work, and uh, for dinner, we're probably going to be having meatball soup. Um, so, okay. W okay. When I talk about how this, this camera, right, has had a few issues for the past couple months and I haven't been fixing them, it's because there has been, I don't know, some sort of, I've got an elder frenzy, I apologize. There's been sort of a weird, weird disconnect right, that is preventing me from uh, properly recording my life in the way I used to, right, um, and I don't know what's up with me, I just, I, I, I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm caring less about, about doing these videos, and it sucks, because, you know, I still care the same amount about looking back at them, you know, and, uh, you know, I'm always, I'm always looking back at these videos just to see what I look like, and, you know, what I mentioned yesterday about my computer taking screenshots every five minutes, um, it's cool to be able to look at a screenshot and be like, oh, I wonder what I looked like at that day. And then I can see what I was doing on that day, like exactly minute by minute basis. It's it's crazy, um, you know. And it's like it's like the the Truman Show, but awesome, you know. Uh, but the thing is, is that you know I can't um, like if the quality of these videos goes down, which it has in the past couple months. Um, I the, like my enjoyment of looking back at these videos will decrease, right? And so I'll look at them less and then I'll care less about my videos and it's sort of a sort of a feedback loop of just the videos getting worse and worse. And I feel like if I keep going down this path, I'm gonna stop doing these videos. And that sucks, that really sucks because I think it's important, not only for me, but it sounds a little cringe, like for humanity, you know? Cause there aren't too many people doing this. There aren't too many people recording themselves, talking about their ideas and their thoughts on the world every single day, you know? there, are, there are, there's an extreme amount of people doing this, you know, and it's not going to be around forever. And, you know, um, a lot of people, when they do stuff like this, they don't prioritize keeping it around forever. And I'm, I'm prioritizing that. I'm making sure. So, you know, I, I think it's important and I really feel like today, today, hopefully is an inflection point to, to higher quality videos and, and more, um, like intentional sort of ideas, you know, in my videos. And I'm going to like, of course, I'm still going to be talking about what I ate, but that's not going to be like the entire video. You know, and it's not going to be, I, I'm going to try and turn my light on every time I record my video because, you know, if I'm recording this video to see what I, looks like I'm balding here. I can assure you I'm not. I went to the doctor and said I wasn't balding. That's the most cringe thing I ever said. I'm sorry. Um, you know, not only is it useful for me, but, you know, it's useful for, for everyone, you know, me doing these videos. And, um, you know, I'm worried that I'll stop doing them if they keep getting worse. And so I'm going to be increasing the quality. And if the whole point, you know, is to see what I look like on a certain day and to see what I was thinking, what I was doing, if I'm just talking about what I ate and the camera's all dark and you can't see what I look like, barely, you know, um, what is the point of even doing the videos? So I'm going to be turning my light on. I'm going to be talking about more things. It's going to be more interesting, right? So um, I think either yesterday or the day before, um, I was talking about um, how... I was talking about Elon Musk's Twitter deal, and I was like, oh, I'll talk about that later. Now is when I'm going to talk about that because my parents are at the store right now. There's going to be no background noise, so that's going to be nice. Um, you know, I think the stuff going on with Twitter is really interesting, right? Um, I have been using Twitter since, like, 2018, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a bit of a Twitter fan. You know, um, a lot of people always talk about how much it sucks all the time, and that's kind of the whole meme, you know, Twitter users hate Twitter, right? I love Twitter. I think it's a lot of fun. I always enjoy using it. And it's like one of the sole, few social media platforms where I feel like I, I actively get a lot of value out of it. Because, you know, it's really the only place you can hear about news stories, you know, seconds after they happen. You know, you, ju you just hear about them, you know, and it's astonishing. Um, and, it, you know, you feel like you're there with people as you're figuring it out. You know, it's like you're in a whole room full of people and you're watching a TV screen, you know, and everybody's reacting to the, to the news as you are. And, you know, not even as a news thing, you know, sometimes there's just like interesting things that happen online or interesting things that happen to people. And, you know, everybody you know, kind of jokes about it and riffs on it. And, uh, you know, everything's sorted in a certain way through the algorithms where it really shows the best content. And, you know, the whole platform is really, um, really a marvel. And I'm happy, you know, 
uh, 2016 was not a great inflection point for a lot of things, but it was a great inflection point for, for Twitter, right? Um, and, you know, I really enjoy using Twitter. And so, you know, when I heard that Elon Musk was going to be buying Twitter, I was like, huh, hmm, that, that's interesting, you know? Uh, and of course, you know, you try and kind of try to get out of it, you know, he, he ended up getting it. And I was like, I, you know, I was super, super indifferent at the time uh, because I understand, you know, I, I, I used to be very, very, very into the Tesla company, and I, I know all their cars, you know, a Tesla passes by on the street, I can tell what Tesla it is, right? To be fair, there are only like eight Teslas, uh, including like the different specs, right? But, um, you know, I'm, I'm into Teslas, right? And I understand his leadership style, and I was, you know, I was wondering if like, you know, that, if that was going to cause some tension at Twitter, and it did, right? Uh, he ended up firing like 75% of the employees, um, and, you know, then... Uh, nothing has really happened since then. He rolled out that $8 verification program, which led to a lot of people impersonating him. But I don't think, I don't think that's what people will be talking about when they talk about the Twitter takeover in like a few years. You know, I don't, I don't, everybody's talking about that. I don't think that'll be the most important. Um, what I really think will be the most important is like how he is, it seems like he is shifting the culture at the company from a, like sort of a, sort of a, he, he was shifting it to what Twitter was before to an, an exclusively an engineering focused company, right? Uh, where they focus on like good code and stuff. Uh, but I like, I, you know, Elon Musk is a very rich guy, uh, not necessarily the smartest guy, right? He, um, he knows how to, he knows how to talk about things on camera and seem very smart. Uh, but you know, he hires engineers for a reason, you know, he's not, he's not single handedly building, building Tesla's in a cave, like how, uh, like how, I was gonna make a stupid reference. He's not building Teslas in a cave. You know, he hires all these engineers to build the Teslas for him, right? And, um, and you know, I feel like him firing 75% of the workforce is a little crazy. Um, I'm sorry, this is so rambly and I need to collect my thoughts. I feel like, so I've heard that this um, strategy where he's firing a bunch of the workforce and then hiring, like rehiring people that they definitely need, um, is relatively a little common when it comes to new leadership styles in tech, uh, but I'm not necessarily sure if that's true. Uh, like when, from what I've heard, when someone new comes into into a leadership position, they fire a lot of the people they don't think they need, and then um, they either rehire or hire new people that they definitely need um, because it finds all of the all of the top performers and it kind of sort of weeds out the the people not really doing anything at the company and just kind of wasting a wage, right? Um, and you know it sucks that all those people are being fired. Um, and that all these people are quitting. Um, but you know, apparently it's a little common under new leadership. Um, and you know, I don't know. Uh, I think the world cup, I'm not into soccer. Um, the world cup starts what? Like now? Oh, tomorrow. The world cup starts tomorrow. Right. And, uh, Elon Musk, he just tweeted, be sure to go on Twitter for live updates of, of the world cup. And you know, obviously, that is a that is a reference to how a lot of people are saying that Twitter's probably not going to last through Sunday because um the World Cup's starting, and you know it's probably going to break their servers or something. Uh, but I don't know. Twitter is very resilient. I don't know. I I can't I can't form my thoughts. I should probably should have thought more before I recorded this video. But um, you know, currently, I uh, I disagree a bit with how how Elon Musk is doing it. He's a bit um he's just like a, an annoying Reddit guy. Uh, who's super rich, and I feel like annoying Reddit guys are kind of the worst guys. Um, and so it sucks that he is um, he is being so annoying about the things he doing he's doing, and he's being so public and he's being so like newsworthy. He like okay, there are like five hundred billionaires, right? And you only know the names of like ten of them, or like like six of them. You know, and the reason why you hear about those six billionaires all the time, or like those ten billionaires, like Bill Gates and like Jeff Bezos, is because they want to be public. Like they want to be famous people who like are celebrities and also very rich, right? Um, the reason why you don't hear about those other five hundred billionaires is because they don't have a big marketing team behind them to like to like market them as a as a character and like someone who like who like innovates, you know? Um, and of course, that's not actually the case. They hire engineers who innovate, but um, they, you know. A lot of billionaires who are very famous have a sort of team behind them to prop them up as as big engineers, right? And like and like 
big thinkers, you know, when they're, when they're just like guys who are very wealthy because probably because their parents were wealthy and they had a higher chance of being wealthy when, because they were born into a rich family, right? Um, but, you know, um, I wish Elon Musk just wasn't so, so, like, attention-seeking. He loves attention, you know, it seems like. And, you know, I'm not one to psychoanalyze him, even though that's exactly what I'm doing, but, you know, I feel like, you know, um, he's just not a very smart guy, and he, he, he's pretty good at hiring people. He's good at hiring good engineers who can make good rockets and, like, um, cars in certain places and stuff. Um, but, you know, he's not a very smart guy engineering-wise, um, and he needs to, uh, maybe, maybe humble himself a little bit, and maybe, I don't know, stop being so, so weird. And he's, like, doing, like, code reviews around the office, and I'm, like, it's so stupid what's going on. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. If you want to hear my opinions on things, ask me in the comments. I've been recording for 11 minutes. I have nothing to say uh, because I didn't collect my thoughts before the video. But, um, you know, I think that's, I think it's still important. And uh, I think it's still interesting. And, uh, you know, I'm just rambling. And, uh, yeah, it's crazy. I think Twitter is probably going to last a long time. Uh, but not necessarily because of Elon Musk's leadership. I just think that Twitter is sort of an inherently, like, existent platform. Um, like, you know, Twitter is particularly so important in the world of politics like post 2016 like politics is just is just on twitter now like that's what politics is um which is kind of crazy but um at least in america you know uh and so i can't possibly imagine a world without twitter existing um because it just seems so impossible and like weird you know i, I don't know um but yeah <laughs> this is a bad video oh well what can you do all right, see you, dude.